Hi, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. I'm Harry Donahue, back here at Lime Kiln Golf Club in Horsham, Pennsylvania, as we continue our little visit with two of the greatest Philadelphia left-handers of all time, Kurt Simmons of the Phillies and Bobby Shantz of the old Philadelphia Athletics. We began last week talking to both of them about how they broke into the game of baseball back in the 40s, their careers in Philadelphia and beyond, and now how Kurt is co-owner here at Lime Kiln and Bobby at the age of 88 gets out to play as much as he can. So stay with us. Coming up more with Kurt Simmons and Bobby Shantz at Lime Kiln on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Honey, what are all these cash rewards? Stellar checking with Smart Rewards. We earn cash on check card purchases and when we transfer money from our Stellar checking into our savings account. Cool. How should we spend them? Mm. Stellar. Stellar. Probably groceries. <sighs> Stellar checking from Susquehanna Bank. Earn cash rewards whether you're spending or saving. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. We are at the Lime Kiln Golf Club with Kurt Simmons, just happens to be one of the owners of Lime Kiln, and Bobby Shantz, who uh, a few years ago shot even par, which I think at the time you were 81, so you were 11 shots under your age, Bob, and uh, even par here at Lime Kiln. That's not too I don't shabby. know how anybody remembers that, because I don't remember it. Yeah, get out of here. You remember every <laughs> shot if we wanted to go over the whole 18 hole. Oh, you know, God. last week we were with Kurt and Bobby, and we were talking about uh, back when they got into baseball and what it was like. and who they played against, and Kurt going to the Cardinals and pitching against the Phillies, and Bobby, of course, MVP of the American League back in 1952 with the Philadelphia Athletics. Bob, let's uh, go back to your career a little bit. It, it left, you left Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and uh, you wound up actually pitching for one of your rivals, the New York Yankees in the late 50s. What was that like? Oh, that was fun. I ran all the way up the turnpike to get there. <laughs> yeah, they were a winning yeah. team, right? Boy, they had a great team. Yeah, they were, they were tough. I, I, I was pretty lucky to, when I pitched against them. I beat them four times one year, I, I remember. So Casey said, hey, if you can't beat them, that's get them to join us. Yeah, that's, that's, I was just going to tell you that. Well, first year I went to spring training in 57 with them. And I got dressed early. I was sitting this is down West Palm Beach, and Casey came out of the clubhouse, and he came over. And I never met the man. I mean, you know, I know who he was, of course. But he said, "You little, right. I won't tell you what." He said, the only reason we got you is because you beat us. <laughs> That's what he told me. Right. So I said, "Well, it's nice meeting you, Casey." Now, in '57, you you were in the World Series with the Yankees. '57. Right? Was that your first World Series? Yep. '57. Against the Braves. Yeah, 57, 58, and 60. It was right. three World Series. Yeah. Okay, and, and 60 was at, I know you were in oh, that last game yeah, too, right? I know that, that was the guy. Pittsburgh game. I know how he lost that. Seventh game of the World Series at yeah. Old Forbes Field. Yeah. You came in as a relief pitcher. How many innings did you pitch in I that seventh I went from game? the second to the eighth. Wow, second to and the eighth. And then eighth innings when that, they had hop hit two back in the throat, double but play ball. <laughs> that would have ended uh, the game? No, that was the eighth inning. Oh, in the eighth but, inning. Okay. I'm, I'm, no, I, I'm. Probably could have beat him because I, I was throwing pretty good. But, but I don't know about he might have taken me out. Uh, uh, Casey might have taken me out the well, last inning. We all know what there. happened in the ninth inning. You weren't yeah. pitching. No, thank goodness. And Bill Mazeroski came up. Uh, and, uh, and Ralph Terry. <laughs> Ralph Terry serves up the home run over. Yeah. Yogi Berra was in left field. He was in left field. Right. I can remember watching him watch that ball. And that was it. <laughs> Pittsburgh had its oh, World yeah. Series. Yeah, that was really something. And then the following year, I'm with Pittsburgh. How about that? I had to tell him the best team didn't win. Before. So you went to I Pittsburgh. I went to and, those and, guys. Then, and then from Pittsburgh, you went to where? Uh, Houston. Louis? Houston. Oh, Houston. Houston, yeah. I opened a, Tell me opened about the way you guys used to dress with the, uh, they were the Colt 45s. Colt 45s, back in those yeah. Days, right? And they used yeah. to dress you like cowboys? Oh, yeah. They had the ladies come in with all their uh, sewing machines and they made beautiful cowboy uniforms with the cowboy hat. 
boots. And you had to wear this. We had to on wear. The road. We had to wear them when we go on the road, and <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people didn't like that. I don't think, but we could go on through the airports and. The, they thought it was a band or something going wow. Everybody just dressed alike. It was beautiful, you know, beautiful soup, but we kind of conspicuous. How long did that you know? last? It lasted that whole year. The whole season? Yeah, 1962, yeah. Right. And then you yeah. pitched in the Astrodome, did you? No. No, no. you never no, pitched No, I, I only pitched, I opened up the season in 62 uh, against the Cubs, and, and we beat them 11 to 2. I was having trouble. You had to throw through was, the mosquitoes down oh, there man, in Houston? Oh, man, terrible. Mosquitoes were so big. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, even the white part of our... Down here, we see the white part of our stocking that were red from blood. Wow. Terrible. I was there, and Clint Courtney, he killed a, killed a rattlesnake underneath the, the clubhouse, in, in with, the with, clubhouse. With, a, with a fungo bat, yeah. Wow. Right, right underneath the clubhouse. And, and Kurt, Whew, meanwhile, is pitching. Uh, you left Philadelphia in 1960. You go to the Cardinals. And from St. Louis in what, 65 was your last year in St. Louis? 66. 66. Middle of 66. And you went to Wrigley Field and the Cubs? Wrigley Field. I was, uh, Shane Deese was the manager. And I said, Red, let me know what's going on because I wasn't pitching. We had like eight starters. I'm in the, sitting in a bullpen and I'm not even getting to warm up hardly. So anyway, they're trying to deal me. and. Uh, they had a shot. Baltimore wanted to pick me up, and they. But Housen was was the GM. He's trying to get, he's trying to get a player, a minor league player. And so I, Baltimore won the World Series that year. Whatever, I'd have been, I could have been a bullpetter with them. But anyway, I ended up with the Cubs, and uh, with Leo to Lip to Rocher, and that was in uh, end of June. And then, uh, All Star game time, uh, Robin Roberts came over, and he he was my pitching coach. In and Chicago, it, in Chicago Cubs, and he and he also pitched every fourth or fifth day. So we were teammates for that whole year there. And I said, "Don't mess me up. Don't talk to me about pitching." What now the Cubs? <laughs> of course, hey, let's see who else was on that. You had uh, Ernie Banks, of course, was there. Ernie Banks, was, S Santo. Santo was at third base. Billy Williams was w there. Williams was there. Yeah. Fergie <coughs> Jenkins. Did he get? Fergie Jenkins over to was. The yeah, he was just coming in and. Uh, Fergie said, uh, Gene Mock said he didn't have any guts. So he ended up w winning a lot of games and you in the Hall of the, Fame. You know all about Gene Mock. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 know him. I, know, I knew him well, yeah. Uh, so I knew him well. So you and Fergie had something in common. He's the only guy that screwed up two, two World Series, whatever. <laughs> two, pe two pennants. But anyway, poor guy. And Fergie went to the gone. Hall of Fame. So he had enough guts to go to the Hall of Fame. F Fergie. Fergie. And, and, you know, winning in Chicago, that, you know, uh, you talk about a band box when the wind's blowing out. Uh, it was a... Uh, it was a tough pitch, but he threw that ball low and stuff, and uh, uh, he did very well, of course. Yeah. And these two gentlemen have done very well when it comes to golf. Kurt, obviously, here is co-owner at uh, Lime Kiln, and, and Bobby as a player, and he still gets out there and uh, does it, I don't know how frequently, but, Bob, I know you'll still like to get out there and play. We're going to yeah, talk about that when I we do. come back, all right? Yep. Back with Kurt Simmons, Bobby Shantz here at Lime Kiln. In just a moment, as Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management continues. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. There can be only one number one. One outperforms. One outplays. The one shot. The one moment that separates one from the rest. That's when one redefines distance. That's how one earns number one. R1, the one driver played by more tour pros than any other. From Taylor, the number one driver in golf since 2001. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Today, we're at Lime Kiln Golf Club in Horsham with Kurt Simmons, Bobby Shanson. Gentlemen, we've talked uh, over the past week and a half now about your baseball careers, but uh, we're, the reason we're here at Lime Kiln is to talk, too, about golf. And you're one of the reasons why Lime Kiln is around. Back in 19, mid-60s, 60, 60, 65, 65, yeah. Right. 
you, Robin Roberts, the great late Hall of Famer, right. got involved with a group of guys and purchased what is now a 27-hole golf course. Tell us about it. Right. Well, it was called Oak Park, and we, we, uh, I, got, I got involved. Uh, my lawyer, Bob Bass, called me. I was with the Cardinals in Pittsburgh uh, in 65, and he, and he said a bunch of us are going to buy this abandoned golf course called Oak Park, and uh, I'd like you to jump get in, get in with us. I said, hey. What do you think? He said, I think it's going to be all right. So I said, well, put me in. I, I had I'd never seen it. So when we came to Philadelphia, I got Dottie, my wife Dottie, and, and, uh, and of course, Mary Roberts. The three of us drove up to see what, where this place was, and we couldn't even find a driveway. We finally <laughs> got in, and it was- There were no car pits available. No, right? nothing. It was overgrown and abandoned, of course, and uh, it, was, it was a real mess. So, so that was the start of things, but- uh, Well, somebody must have had the, the vision to say, hey, we can do something here. Well, I, 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 was, I knew I was toward the end of the trail in baseball, and-, and uh, I wanted a, I wanted a job, you know. So, so I said I'd like to manage the place, you know. And and they said we'd like to have you, but we don't know if we could pay you. I said, well, I gotta get paid. <laughs> right. So anyway, started out at twelve thousand bucks a year, and I was kind of one of the laborers with, uh, with the boys. And we had a couple of shaky greenskeepers, and we finally got got uh, got a young guy named Eddie Roynan who. Uh, uh, and he uh, he had ideas and whatever, and he was he was he we had him for like forty years. Now, did you have a clubhouse and everything, or did you have to build this? This was the this ended up being the clubhouse. This was a dirt a, a, a building which we had equipment in here, you know, tractors and all kind of stuff, rats and uh, a lot of things. But uh, sixty eight winter we got we built this uh, built the clean this place out and, and started the uh, the bar and grill, and, grill. and then we. Built some uh, buildings up away and uh, got the, got the maintenance stuff sort of way there. But anyway, it was a slow process and uh, and it was a long haul, really. Now this gentleman over here can still get it around the golf course a little bit. I know, Bobby. What was your best handicap? Eight. Your lowest handicap. I, eight. I finally get down to an eight handicap. But that was when I was hitting the ball pretty decent. But I'm I'm way past that. I'm so when you retire, what year did you retire? 1964. Okay, is that when you really started to concentrate? That's when on I playing? started playing golf. Yeah. Yeah. 64. And uh, you, you took to it. I mean, what was it about golf that you liked right away? I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of a crazy game until Kurt called me one time, asked me to get in with the, when they were opening that go, the uh, a golf course, and he asked me if, if I wanted to join the 16 guys or uh -huh. 15 guys. I think they need another guy, but I I said, no, I don't think so. I was building a pool at my house, and I said, no, I'm putting the money in the pool. I, 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 I like to do it, Kurt, but now I wish I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> you would have gotten a free round or two. Kurt yeah, well, he gave, yeah, no, it. he, huh? Robbie and Kurt gave me a lot of free rounds there, man, and I really appreciated it. What's I'll your lowest you. round ever? I, I got in a, the 60s? Yeah, I did get in the 60s once or twice, yeah. I was hitting the ball pretty good, but now I'm too old. I'm, well, just, I'm just taking my wife and playing. I can beat her yet. Okay. <laughs> so How about uh, my daughter. Any holes in one? I had one over in Phoenixville Country Club okay. in the second hole. Yeah, I'll never forget that. I didn't even really hit the How ball. How about I you, could. Kurt? Did you ever have any I holes have, in I one? had a lot of holes in one. They're all here. I had about 10 or 11 of them. Jeez, really? Really, yeah. I hit a couple off the branches on the, on the green. and uh, <laughs> Yeah, right. Yep. I, I just was lucky, but I played I played a lot of golf in the, in the afternoon. And now, the because uh, you got the hip problem, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. No, I don't, I don't play anymore. I watch them. Okay. I ride around and watch them, hold the flag and things like that, but that's it. Anybody that ever saw Kurt pitch back in his heyday, you had a very distinctive delivery. Uh, whatever it was, I don't know how you, it's sort of like a herky-jerk move with your leg. You kind of hid the ball behind your leg, and all of a sudden it was out on top yeah. of the guy. Do you think that contributed to your hip problems? Uh, no, no, no question. But, 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 but I thought I was a pretty smooth pitcher until I saw them uh, before, before they had TV uh, videos and all that stuff. I so you never I, realized you were No, nah, I didn't. That was your motion and of course, a kid in when Oscar. I started with, in the pros, a guy named Earnshaw, George Earnshaw was an old pitcher. He was, he was a roving pitching coach for the Philly organizations. So I, I used to cross fire, and, uh, which I, I, str I strode a little toward first base, and, <laughs> and, and he'd say, you've got to straighten that out. You're going you're gonna to mess up your arm and all that stuff. And so I would draw a line to, toward home plate and try to get on the line or across it, try to open up. 
Now I'm worried about my leg and all this crap, and they're knocking the heck out of me, you know. So they finally said, pitch the way you pitched in high school. And that, that, was, like, that was like the, the start of 50, I think, really. Be, but the two years before that, I'm trying to, I'm trying to open up and, and all that stuff, but uh, it, it didn't work. So went back to, the way, back to uh, they said, got you do what, do what brought amazing. you right, right. You know, you look at what has happened and how the game has evolved, and uh, no place probably is it more evident than in pitching, I think, today, and, and with pitch counts and things like that. And, Bobby, you told me uh, a while ago that you were involved one time in a 14-inning game. You yeah. You 14 innings. Yeah, Yankee today, Stadium. Today, that's unheard of. But I asked yeah. you how many pitches you threw, and you still don't remember. No, that. I have what no do you idea. Think, two, 250? I don't know, but it was a lot because I, I, I walked seven guys and I struck out 11 so there's a lot of pitches right there now yeah. your manager was Jimmy Dykes and you said he no. came out how many times to oh, he, he wants to take me out so man, we had a lousy bullpen so I I said man I'm, if I'm gonna lose this game I'll, I'll lose it You're myself to, and you I said it? to myself yeah we ended game. up beating them yeah uh, 14 Mantle, Mantle hit a home run off me in the third inning it was one to one after nine a couple times through there, Jimmy wanted to take me out of there, but I said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. If you're not tired, no, I'm fine. You know, so, and and today, you know, we hear all about this, uh, you know, Tommy John surgery. Yeah. That, that yeah. Al- not, not, it's not done rarely. It's done almost uh, like one out of every six or seven pitchers. Well, yeah. Did you guys. have any arm problems, Kirk? Oh, yeah, I did. I had uh, I had an elbow. In fact, I, I had my elbow operated on one time. And it was, a, a calcified bursa sac, they said. You know, I was out for uh, uh, most of that year, and that's, they sent me to Williamsport, and I came back. I was coming back in, in 60, and that's when uh, John Quinn told everybody I had a bad arm, and I was I was throwing good. <laughs> and that's they, when they released So me. then they release you, and you go uh, on to right, right. win so, about 70 more games at the Cardinals. Right, yeah. All right, listen, we'll take a break, and then we'll wrap things up with Kurt Simmons and Bobby Shantz. Right here on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. This year we probably will go over 2 million visitors. It's not limited edition, not cast conditioned, not exclusive or extra, nor is it private reserve. It is, however, a rare breed. American Lager, from an American-owned, family-operated brewery. Since 1829, we kept it so simple we're still in fashion. Fancy that. America's oldest brewery, Yingling. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin. Go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. What if I miss? During the Masters in early April, the Valley Forge Casino hosted a Masters Challenge, providing golfers of all abilities a chance to try out their skills on a simulator. It was also an opportunity to introduce a new website. Its co-creator, Jake Wagner, explains all that was going on. Here at the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort for the Valley Forge Masters Challenge. Um, We're super excited to kick off the golf season. You know, have a lot of people coming out, hitting their shots on the golf simulator, hitting some chips and putts, and really getting excited for finally warm weather, beautiful golf season, and I think we're uh, really excited to kick off this uh, partnership with Philadelphia PGA and you know, really just showcase what we have here at the Valley Forge Casino Resort. You know, we're also here to kick off a new revolutionary platform for the golf industry. It's called the Professional Golfers Network, PGN Plus. It allows courses to remain private and exclusive while generating additional revenue by opening up strategic windows of tee times for our elite network of golfers. You know, we want to give people an opportunity to find their home course by playing these courses when the course decides. You know, I think the golf industry is ready to adapt to modern day technology and social media and I think PGM Plus is the answer. We're really excited to get this out to the Philadelphia golf community, and I think uh, you know we're going to give country clubs the opportunity to remain private and exclusive, but to be able to control their operation by utilizing the Professional Golfers Network. PGNPlus.com. Check it out. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, 
and it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. This is the traveling golfer, Tony Leodora, and we take our viewers to the greatest golf courses and destinations throughout America and around the world. We've got the director of golf both at Cinnamon Hill and the sister course, White Witch, Keith Steen. You've got two beautiful golf courses. I've played them both. They're different courses, but I love both of them. Tell us a little bit about the courses and what you love about them. The White Witch, we get compared a lot to Kapalua. The vistas and the views when the cruise ships come rocking through here, it is, it's, it's <laughs> something else. It's, it's beautiful. Obviously, we have a lot of elevation changes. Cinnamon Hills on the water. The White Witch is more up on the on the hillsides with 16 holes that uh, overlook the ocean. It, it's fabulous. It's a fabulous property. The whole, all of Rosal is, is wonderful. Cinnamon Hill, the older course, was built in the 60s, but it was redone after 2000 by Robert Von Hagee, the same guy who did the White Witch. I've heard of shotgun starts before, but this is ridiculous. I've been spoiling myself. First time here, beautiful place. Been to the spa two days in a row, and now I'm enjoying a drink. I'm a virgin down here in Jamaica, and I'm having the best time of my life. So, to all of you, hello. Here at Cinnamon Hill with John Lynch, Director of Tourism for Jamaica. John, thanks for having me in your country. Our oh, pleasure, Tony. Well, it's is third, this your first time here? Third time back to Annie's oh, Revenge. Okay. And I'm coming back as many times as you'll let me come in. Where does tourism stand on the pecking order of important industries for Jamaica? Personally, personally it's number one, but however, <laughs> it really is number one and in terms of foreign exchange. This year we probably will go over two million visitors who are staying in hotels, etc. And then we get another 1.2 million on coming in on cruise ships. So it's very, very important. And the other industries after well, that? Well, we, we have the bauxite, which is alumina. We have rum, as you know, we have coffee, agriculture, sugar. The rum comes from sugar. Of the tourism component, how much of that is golf tourism and how important is that to the overall picture? Very important because it's seen as an activity. Come, bring their golf clubs, but when their spouses see the beach and the activities and the tours and the attractions that we have to offer, we have close to 200 attractions here. That's more than the entire rest of the Caribbean has put together. Well, I see by the big clock here at Cinnamon Hill, it's time to leave Jamaica. A sad farewell to Annie's Revenge, all the players and all the people who made it so great. The best part we know is that in Jamaica, we'll be back. And until then, every little thing's gonna be all right. this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Free enterprise is the engine that drives our economy. Everyday businesses, big and small, work to make life better for their customers and a better life for themselves. Susquehanna knows successful businesses need a strong financial partner, someone who can help keep your business running at peak efficiency. The people of Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for businesses like yours. Member FDIC.
Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. We're with Kurt Simmons, Bobby Shantz here at Lime Kiln Golf Club in Horsham for a little bit of a wrap-up. Uh, guys, we talked about your career. We talked about golf and how it's still a part of your life, obviously. How about baseball? Is baseball still a part of your life? Do you watch the yeah, games Yeah, I do. I, I, I enjoy watching them on television. I, I don't go the traffic and all that stuff and, and night games and I don't drive at night. So I, But I'm watching... As long as I can stay awake, I watch the game. Uh, when they're playing in L.A., uh, I, I, uh, I can't make it most of the time. It's uh, too late. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the West Coast games, you're not going to stay up. You know, when you, you hear a lot of athletes today think about how it's all about timing. And it, had they, you know, been born maybe a little bit later, the kind of money that's available out there now, you signed for $65,000 back in the 40s, which was a lot of money, relatively right. speaking. Yeah. But nothing compared to what pitchers, and let's face it, Kurt, you won 193 games, I think, in your career in right. the big leagues. And uh, you didn't make anywhere near the amount of money. that. Do you, do you regret that, or what do you think about that? No, I'm, I, I am uh, I'm, I'm happy when I played. I was, I was paid... Uh, enough you know i was i was in in the bracket with with most of the, a lot of the guys and uh, and i i remember talking to my mother way back and she said yeah you were i was probably born a little too soon she said hey you were born in 1929 during the, during the depression you're lucky you're around <laughs> just you know <laughs> so be thankful you leave know? it to a mother to put yeah right anyway so you, that huh? that was what she told me but uh, it was uh yeah, I, I, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm saying, hey, if if the boss wants to pay you the money, you got to take it. You know, and, uh, it's it's kind of crazy, but hey, they're doing it, and uh, I don't know how, how long it's going to keep going like that. Bobby, let me ask you: as uh, an old player, a great player uh, for several teams, and pitching in all-star games, being a most valuable player, uh, when you watch the game today, what do you think about? I think it's too slow. <laughs> too slow. And now, now the umpire, all this stuff they have to watch two or three times uh, uh, with the with the telephones and all that baloney. I, I think it's, it's going to make a four-hour game every every time I look at it. I, I don't. I can't. I can't watch a full game. Right. I, I'm I'm asleep by the time the game's over. I just, they're too darn long. I You'd think. rather go out there and run around on the golf course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't run around anymore. I walk. <laughs> Gentlemen, for the last two weeks, it's been great sitting here talking old time baseball and your involvement in it and great stars that you were back in your day. Philadelphia hasn't seen the likes of these two guys for a long time when you consider what they accomplished over a relatively short period of time back in the late 40s and during the 50s. Two great left-handers, Kurt Simmons with the Phillies and Bobby Shantz with the Philadelphia Athletics. Thank you. Bobby, Thank you. Kurt, Dave, it's thanks. been a pleasure. Okay. Thanks Very for having us. Great. That's it for Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. And remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. <laughs> See you next time on Inside Golf. <laughs> don't pick presented up. Presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.